Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Prinai. Here, about 40 minutes by road away from Konas, the second city of Lithuania, where we are here for the European Ultimate Indoor Championships. Bringing you more action from the Open Division back in Pool A. We saw the other two teams in this division open us up this morning, Latvia and Lithuania too. And we are now seeing Ireland up against Poland. So we're going to be really an really interesting clash of styles and cultures potentially out there on the Frisbee field. It's Benji Reese back with you in the booth here in Prenai all day and very excited to be working with the Zoom TV crew out here. And this is a bumper day of ultimate, let me tell you that. 8 till 8 we are here. That's 12 full games of Frisbee, you lucky, lucky people. I'm going to need to get me some lozenges at the end of this. It'll be fine. Don't worry, I'm super excited to be here. First time on TV. I've been to Lithuania. And loving it so far. Crunch of snow underfoot outside, but indoors, of course, always perfect conditions for ultimate. Looks like we're going to have Poland pulling to Ireland, so the Irish will begin the game receiving on offence. As you might expect, the Poles wearing the kit that matches their flag, the white shirts with the red shorts. And for Ireland, it is that deep green with the black shorts. That ball lands just shy of the end zone, and that will allow the Irish to bring it in from the brick mark with James Dirty. And fortunately, after it spun under the seats, it uh, ricocheted all the way back out again. A little leading scuba there over the top. Fitzgerald to the end zone, and Fitzgerald finds Martin. Easy as that opening score here for the Irish. They take a 1 0 lead. Can't really ask for a better start to the game if you're Ireland. Just going one-on-one -on -one in the centre there, setting that isolation up. And then just as Fitzgerald is catching in and looking downfield, those receivers in the end zone split. They go the opposite ways. It has the pick of which one he likes, and he chooses Ben Martin towards this near side. Ball field at the back of the end zone by Dvorzecki. Here's Novak for Poland. Back to Zvorzetski. Oh, high hammer over the top. This will invite a little bit of pressure. And they got caught too far underneath it, did the first players. And then there was a man loitering at the back there for the poles. As they made it one a piece. Indoors is a very fast-paced game. If you're not familiar with it, more used to the outdoor equivalents. It can catch you off guard a little bit sometimes. As that one over the top. From Dvorzecki. Finds Novak for the score. Fitzgerald again. This one's spicy. Martin can't catch it in the end zone. But he doesn't need to because the simple pass. And a great big hug from Niall McGovern to Ben Martin. Makes it 2-1 to the Irish. See there, there's the hammer over the top. Martin, I think he wanted to catch that in the end zone, but realised with the defender right on his back there, couldn't take the opportunity, the chance that it might be undercut. And does the right thing as well, because McGovern makes the continuation cut from that and makes it 2-1 to Ireland. Poland instantly looking deep. There looks to be a defender there. And indeed there is. Cormac Shields read that one all the way out of the hands 
of Mikowetz. Chance for Islands to break. Scuba towards the break side. Good catch made under pressure there by Shields, the man who got that block. And now Shields looking to hammer over the top into traffic. That is a brilliant grab from Joshua Reed. And Reed continues into the end zone for Shane Monaghan. First break of the game goes Islands away. And what a way to do it as well. This throw and into double coverage, but answering the call, heroic stuff from Reed. And then the simple flip to Monaghan, who's left open for his defender, had come off to try and get the block. And Ireland riding the fire there for a 3 1 lead. There's certainly an element of indoors where you have to back your receivers to make big plays. Bank in the centre of the end zone to Bison. Underneath, back to Mateusz Bank. It's Skowronek. High over the top into the hands of Robalewski. Certainly after we've seen teams look deep frequently, this one is a little bit slower and... There is a debate here as to whether or not this is in or out of bounds. Leonard Sobiak was the thrower. David Robolevsky the receiver. And they're calling it good. Good spirit there. Always think if you're not sure, have the discussion. Because if need be, you can always you know, retract your initial point of view. And after a little bit of a conflap there, but all in good spirit. You can see there that cut from deep from Robolevsky. And we're going to see it in slow motion. The issue, I think, is when exactly he makes control. But certainly, if he gets that cleanly, then I think that back foot is down. And that front foot has not come down yet and touched the line. So the score would be good. It is 2-3. Ireland leading the poles here. You want to get updates from across the tournament. All the games we're streaming this weekend, and believe me, it's a lot of games. 66 in all, I think. Then the best way to do that is to follow Old TV and join the over 15,000 of you who are doing that already. As Ireland punching another score, this time McGovern with the assist. To go along with his earlier goal, Poland 2, Ireland 4 are the current score see Martin come through into the end zone there and this is almost a weave just in the end zone McGovern comes out the defender really commits to get there but because he comes up short it means there's no pressure on this throw and it's as simple as you like from McGovern to Martin for 4-2 5 past 10 local time here just about in Lithuania. One hour ahead of Poland, two hours ahead of Ireland. There's this one on the high stool, floating it towards the side. And that one is well read by Mateusz Bank and with a couple of receivers in the area, sometimes they cross wires a little bit. But good communication there to leave that one for Mateusz Bank. So he has to hold this for a while. McCreary's on the force. And after a while, I think probably with the stall count rising, Batuolme Bison sees no other option but to put it to space, give a receiver a chance to make a play, and that is what Bank does. Uh, I think the disc has snuck underneath the stands there. And, oh, they have actually retrieved a replacement. But they've got another replacement as well anyway. Oh, the irony if the replacement was then subsequently thrown under the stands. Dirty catches the ball. That one, ooh, is a spicy one. Fitzgerald with a, almost a straight-up knife 
but he finds Martin with it, who is having himself a game early on, first game of the day for both these sides. And Ireland coming out red hot. See here Fitzgerald sees the space. Difficult when it comes down at such a vertical angle, but there's the toe drag very clearly inbounds for Ben Martin. Three goals now and an assist. The Irish sitting pretty at the moment, still yet to turn it over. In fact, just the one turnover this game now. 5-3, the Irish lead as Poland begin with the disc at the back of the end zone. Robolewski, oh, there's a player on the floor. Can they take advantage? Not quite. Rishash, back in his hands now. Wants to fire this one into the end zone to Bank, and he's got it as well. Piotr, Rishash, into the end zone. Mateusz Bank, racking up a second score. 4-5 to Ireland. Still just pacing themselves in front of the poles at the moment. And Paul's not letting them get too far out in front. Corcoran runs a little one-two with Dirty. Coming downfield now. Big frame of Dirty. Low throw. Caught by McGovern. Back to Dirty. Happy to go every other if he needs to. Oh, trying to squeeze that one in there. Defender wanted to come over the top, Kashmirak. But holding firm for the score. I think that's Sean Fitzgerald. 6-4 to the Irish. Again, still yet to turn the disc over. I did like this as well, near the end zone. Is it there? No, because you've got all those Polish defenders in the way. We'll go back to Fitzgerald, and he will just... Uh, back to Doherty, excuse me. And he'll pop this one over the top to Fitzgerald for the score. 6-4. Poland back on offense, looking for the inside flick. McCrory doing a very good job, so instead it's the scuba over the top to Skowronek. Bank. Maybe got a little bit of contact as he threw that, but the pass was completed, so no call. He's on. Underneath now, Bank just popping that one off. And then into the end zone. Whoa! I thought Kieran Costello was going to get his hand in there, but the pace at which that was attacked by the Polish receiver maybe caught Costello off guard a little bit, just coming with that head of steam and getting there split seconds before. Both of these sides playing offense at a high level right now. He's on with the catch. It's Poland 5, Island 6. Nice use of space there. Little blade leading the receiver there from Corcoran. Dirty. Underneath. Over the top, faked with purpose by Martin. Here's Corcoran. The bespectacle Corcoran into the end zone. Just puts it on the chest of Sean Fitzgerald. Both of these sides playing with tight margins at times, but they are nailing the execution. 7-5 to Ireland. Both of these sides putting some good tape out there, you have to say. Of course, this is Pool A. Other two teams in this pool, Latvia and Lithuania too, and we saw Latvia get a 17-5 win in the first game of the day. Underneath goes to Sobiak. Skowronek. 
back to Vrash. Josh has it again in his hands. Sobiak underneath, they've got the one-on-one -on -one in the end zone. They don't like it though, they clear it out. And the break throw goes, leads the receiver into the end zone. Poland six, Ireland seven. The quality of offense in this game with the exception of course, the inst what was it? The point that made it 3-1 to Ireland, so the fourth point of the game, where the poles looked deep instantly, they didn't have that connection. That's the only turnover we've seen of the game. Otherwise, both of these sides are motoring away when they've got the disc in hand. The question is, can they find the way to close those gaps on defence? Fitzgerald will bring the, skin, bring the disc in from the brick mark. My mouth just got a little bit ahead of my brain there. Hammer over the top again. They're utilising that isolation in the centre well. Fitzgerald, oh, it's a difficult one, that blade over the top because it's fading away from Ben Martin there a little bit. But brilliant hands there from Ben Martin. Ireland within one point of half. Fitzgerald and Martin, you see how important they are to the Irish. Fitzgerald with a couple of goals and three assists. Four goals for Ben Martin and an assist as well. Again, they're starting out of this dice formation, I've often seen it called. You've got two handlers at the back. You've got one player isolated in the center and then two players in the end zone, either together in the center or in the corners. And again, you just get that leading throw to the isolated player in the center. And when they catch it, you let your end zone monkeys go to work. Robolevsky beckons someone closer, tries to get the little upline throw, one, two, can they lead into the end zone? No, force over the top, still no. Oh, there's a miscommunication, there's a player wide open, and eventually they hit Sobiak as Keenan jumps over the board on the far side. It was open there for a good couple of seconds, and you wondered if somehow the poles just weren't going to hit it, but eventually they found a way to do so. Just maybe a blown switch here. Uh, I think you see there, they try to pass that off to Keenan, and I think he's a, he's a little bit late to, to recognize that that's, that's what's gone on. Obviously, can get quite loud down there on the field. As Robolevsky notches his first assist. This is a scuba that might invite a little bit of pressure with some float on it, but not a problem for Fitzgerald. And then the toe drag swag from Ben Martin. A perfect half offensively for the Irish. You cannot do it better than that. Honestly, their O-line has looked a cut above here. Just that leading scuba, scooping it over to space. And then the continuation very clearly inbounds. Nice shot again from the crew here in Prinai the zoom TV LT crew here I'm working with LT TV this long weekend players get a couple of minutes to break for half time so it's given me an opportunity to tell you that we are here all day from Prinai bringing you action from open pools A and D you can also have a look at the women's division over at Galivar on our other Ulti TV, uh, well, I say on the other channel, it's on this channel as well, but our other stream going on currently, Latvia and Denmark are tied, or not tied, but they are very close in the first half there. And tomorrow, as well as the two pitches we've got today, so that's 24 games, three pitches uh, tomorrow. So we're adding more and more frisbee for you. More open division action we've got here in Prinai with the mixed from Garnivar and the women's division from Costa as well. And then for Sunday, we all switch to Garnivar. For finals day, I think we're streaming the bronze medal and 
finals games over there on Sunday with the full two camera setup. So I think that's 66 games in all for you to enjoy this long weekend here in Lithuania or wherever you're watching. Poland beginning the second half on offense. Banka floating one in the backfield. Bizon. Skowronek. Underneath to Bank. Here's Vizash. You can see there's a lot more big switching being employed downfield for the Irish. Is that one? It's just not quite on the spot there. Knocked to the floor by Joey Curtis for Ireland. Dean McCreary picks up. Oh, a skyscraper of a knife over the top. And the prayer is answered. Kieran Costello with the grab when that went up. I thought that Dean McCreary had thrown away the flawless offence for the Irish. But little did I know what Costello was capable of. Here, Kieran Costello, he is the attraction. And Ireland will pump it up again. Ten seven, the Irish lead now with that break. This first point of the second half, their second break of the game. Good Lord, that was outrageous from the Irish. I think there was discussion about whether they could break that, but I agree. I don't think that was over two meters. Schiller has it as they change some players through here, the poles. Here's the deep shot to the end zone and is bang on the money. Dvorzetsky. It's the receiver, Jakub Kaczmarek. And they make it 8-10. Lovely little blade over the top there. Just finding a way to access that soft spot. I see the Irish are doing a fair amount of heckling in the YouTube chat, which I A, expect and B, respect. Always good to have everyone along with you here on the LTTV YouTube channel. <laughs> Nearly invited the pressure, but Fitzgerald makes the catch. Here's McGovern. Quick hands there from Martin. Back to Corcoran. Corcoran, just a simple pop into the end zone. Doherty's first goal of the game to go along with an assist. 11-8 to the Irish, and I tell you what, this Irish offense is summing out at the moment. Obviously, the game is not over yet, but time-wise, only a little bit over halfway through, and I don't think they could have dreamt of a better offensive performance than this. You, I'm not sure you can get a better offensive performance than this. Here's a hammer from the poles over the top of the defender shields. And there's a discussion here. Did he maybe not grab that cleanly? Evidently he did not because if he, if he had, this would not be a discussion at all. I think a couple of the Irish players are asking if we got a good replay of it. Have a look now. Here we go. Here's the shot over the top. He has it. Oh, and then he bobbles it. And they're calling the turnover standing. I think I agree with that. Had he got it cleanly, as it looked like he had for a good while, 
It would have been the score, but he does fumble it, and he doesn't get that back, doesn't get the catch secured by the time that far foot comes down. Unfortunate one there. As we're seeing all that hammer, that one finally, the Irish turn it over. Just a miscommunication, perhaps. Heads up defense from the poles to get it back. But the Polish offense looking quite congested here. Coming through and it's another drop. Just couldn't get the hand set again there. Kaczmarek. So the Irish with another opportunity. Looking straight to the end zone and maybe a little bit too ambitious on that occasion. I think there was the space there from Curtis to Keenan. But just overthrew it. And ju I mean just overthrew it. So third possession of this point for the Poles. So that one, and that is some grab made by Kaczmara, clearly making amends for the earlier drops. Wozetsky, oh, a floaty scuba that is batted away by Cormac Shields. Curtis, oh, another miscommunication for the Irish. For whatever reason, this point, their D-line offense looks flustered. It's just not been on the same page. Zwolzewski wanted to feather that one over the top, but again, heads up defense there. Cormac Shields is racking up the blocks in this game. At least his third. Here's Finn Campbell. Campbell down the line. Curtis swings across to Shields. Shields, Campbell's got a little bit of separation. They find it. Looking for the upline cut, no. Clearing out the handler space to allow Curtis to come back. Curtis fires it with the one hand. Cool as you like the grab from Shields for the double happiness. The book ends. And Ireland 12, Poland 8. Feels like, especially with what is by the standards of this game, a bit of a marathon point. You do often feel like those do have a big say in the outcome of the game because they can provide a huge mental boost. And rather than Poland being down by two, they're now down by four as Curtis finds shields for the score. Bank catching underneath. Resetting to Bison. Here's Sobiak. Back to Bank. Bison instantly recognizable with the vest and that backwards cap. Playing a little one two with Robolevsky. Everything looking underneath at the moment, quite compressed is the Polish offense. Sobiak, back to Bizon. And there is a pick. McCreary has ditched the mullet. We saw him rocking earlier in the season and gone for the shock of blonde instead. And that one somehow <laughs> finds its way past Campbell. I think he just had his hips turned at the wrong moment. And the Polish defense, the Polish receivers rather knew it. You see it again on the replay. Coming in after the stoppage for the pick. You see Campbell turns to have a look. And that maybe actually is his undoing because it means he can't change his direction back to cover that cut to the space from Mateusz Bank. Corker and catching the ball for Ireland. Dirty clears out. Martin comes back underneath to fill the pattern. Here's McGovern. 
leading Martin towards the sideline. I think he wants this over the top, but he's not going to get it. Has to go back to Corcoran. Corcoran out quickly. Oh, there's a stoppage for a pick, but the throw was a little bit behind. The first time the Irish O-line turns it over. And arguably one of the easier shots they'll have. Wozetsky. Mikowajs. Finds his receiver. Oh, did he... Which foot landed first? I think they're saying that he straddled the line there. Got the front foot down. A violation, I think. Players just going to get back in their positions. Moving before the disc was checked in, and that time they just never got back set. We'll get there in the end, lads. Novak to Borzeski. Oh, he really... Sliced it in there to Mikołajec. Poland with a break. Their first break of the game as well. This might not be done and dusted. Wodzewski to Mikołajec. Just curls it around the force there of Doherty. You wonder at one point the Irish nerves maybe start to come in, a game where they maybe should have been home and hosed. Going to have a timeout here. Teams get one one-minute timeout per game that they can use, only to be used between points, and they cannot use it in the last five minutes before the time cap would go on. Going to give a good opportunity here to bang in some quick little highlights. Two teams here at the venue today that we haven't seen yet, and they will be matching up in our next game. It is Austria against Belgium. That is a 11 o'clock start local time. Or if you're in Austria or you're in Belgium, 10 o'clock Central European. Teams break their timeout huddles. As Doherty catches the pull. Got Corcoran as a free reset, so why not use it? Beckoning someone closer. And you could see there, Josh was reading that one all the way and just stepped right into the lane to get the block. Poland clearly using the timeout to get something cooking on defense. They can come within one here. Josh, who got the block, wants to put the scuba towards the back corner. That is a brilliant throw, and he executed it to perfection. They crossed a lot of their key players over to defense for that line, did the poles, and the timeout works to perfection. With change of defense, gets the block. And then offensively, what a throw that is. Eleven twelve now, Poland within one. That is a three point run now for the Poles. So crossing over some D line players to play offense now. Here's a scuba towards the far side. Defender comes in but doesn't get there. Oh, that's a low throw from Shields. But coming underneath to make the catch and slamming it to the floor in celebration and doing what I think is a terrible imitation of a gritty is Shane Monaghan. I think that's what that is. I'll be honest, I'm not cool, so I don't know. That throw... Oh, very nearly didn't get there. Good spirit as well by the Polish defender, who is right there. I think that's Schiller just saying, yeah, he got his hands underneath that. 
and kept it alive. So the Irish give themselves a little bit more breathing room. 13-11 the score. I feel like the chat was more appreciative of the greedy than I was. Thanks to Old TV's own Didzis Maldaris, by the way, for the uh, super chat. We appreciate your support and uh, looking forward to streaming more of your games later today. Super chats and stickers in YouTube, one of the many ways you can help financially support what Ulti TV does, and you can find out more on our website, ulti.tv, or on the patreon.com slash Ulti TV. As that one towards the break side, simple, easy, Robolewski to Skowronek, who's catching his first goal of the game, which feels a little bit surprising, because it does feel like he has been very involved, but maybe one of those players doing a lot of the grunt work and not getting himself on the stat sheet. Up high inside backhand was really fired out of the wrist by Bison. Guatomier Skovronek with the score. 12-13. Oh, this game is tight. It's exciting. It's tense. You love to see it. Corcoran catching the ball. First pass is to Dirty. Not liking the isolated option, so instead just trying to get the offence running in motion. Oh, that was so silky smooth until the end zone miscommunication. Just playing, running it so quickly. And I think that's a bit of the Space Invaders principle from Corcoran into McGovern. Throwing it where he was rather than where he was going to be. And he ends up a little bit behind and it sneaks his way through his hands. Poland can bring us level here. It's always exciting watching the Irish, I tell you. That one a bit behind. Oh, what a grab from Kaczmarek. Faking the big hammer. I think he's wise to lick that off, in part because there was no one there. This one, Dvozetsky looking for the high one. Defender was in position. Not the best throw on that occasion. I think there's just a little bit of hesitation before he throws it from both the thrower and the receiver. But the Irish give it straight back. No idea what was going on there. Just outside the end zone with McCoyitz. Back to Schiller. Jadze Novak. Tries to find that window, does find the window into the left hand of Jakub Kaczmarek. They've come all the way. They were four points down at 12-8. And it's been a 5-1 run for Poland. To make it 13 apiece. This game looked done and dusted. But it just goes to show, doesn't it? Until it's, until it's, that final point is scored, you never know which way the game may twist and turn. McCreary. The knife, ooh! I thought Shields had stuck it, but it slips through. Bizoni wants to pick up quickly. Irish defence kind of scrambling to get into position. Clearly the intention is to stop that one over the top. But Bank comes steaming through. And for the first time this game, the Poles have the lead. Who saw this coming? At one point, the Irish were 11-8 up having never turned the disc over. We had that marathon point with seven turnovers in all. The Irish got another break and it felt at 12-8 after that heartbreaker that it was probably 
the Irish is going to lose. But all of a sudden, offensive jitters have come into play. Poles, having made some adjustments, seems to do the trick. Martin. Down the line. Good feet by McGovern. Going back to Corcoran. Here's Doherty now. Doherty to Corcoran. McGovern. McGovern, that's got to go to Corcoran. Does go to Corcoran for his first game goal of the game. 14 apiece. What a game this is. And if you're Ireland, that's exactly what you want to see. Not only a clean hold, but you had the offensive plan drawn up. You couldn't get the initial looks you wanted, but rather than look flustered, rather than force it, you're able to go to secondary, tertiary looks. Get your offense back in rhythm. Point cap is at 17. And those of you curious in chat, that one to the end zone, I think that's out of bounds. Bunk isn't going to contest it. Just led him too far out. Not a huge amount he could do. Irish could retake the lead here that somehow they squandered. Swing goes to Campbell. Campbell just drops that one into the bucket for Keogh. Back to Costello. Rory Keogh looking downfield. Swinging to Campbell. Keenan. Keenan high over the top. Oh, this is a heater and it drops in Shields' hands. Ireland back on top, 15-14. This game, man, swinging back and forth. Who's your money on? <laughs> you see it there, just dropping it in. Two defenders, and somehow both of them left clutching at thin air. And Shields kept his focus well. This will be brought to the brick mark by Bartosz Mikowajec. Schiller trying to feather that one down the line. Finds Dvorzecki. Dvorzecki into the end zone. Jedzie Novak makes it 15 apiece. That means whatever happens at the end of this point, it would be 16-15, game to 17. There was a little bit of discussion about it, but they're saying the goal stands 15 all. We're going all the way to 17. Looks like an Enzo miscommunication there from the defense. So here's how the, those of you unfamiliar with the cap rules, here's how it all works. The Hooter will go in about 20 seconds time. So we'll finish that point, it'll be 16-15. Add one to the highest score. And that'll be the score cap. So whatever happens, we are ending up with a game to 17 here. Doherty. Has to take the little dish back to Corcoran. All the scuba, nice high grab made by Martin. Ignore the hooter, we continue. Doherty. Ooh, caught that one through some heavy contact. Did McGovern, you can hear, as Doherty to the end zone to Martin. Martin's sixth goal of the game. Poland have to hold here and then get the break to win. After a couple of games that were probably not as close as the losers hoped. Although, I must admit, looking at the seedings, you feel not necessarily unexpected. This game has fully delivered. 
There's a player wide open deep. That's got to go to Schiller. It has to go. Oh, it's too long. Schiller can only tip it on out the back of the end zone. Sometimes when you see that player wide open, you feel like you have to hit it. But I don't know. Maybe if he was nervous about it, the holster was the right thing. Tries to get the inside backhand, but there's a bump on the mark from Schiller. Foul uncontested. Good spirit. Keo will have the disc checked in. Instant break goes to Campbell. Back to Keo. Gold chain swinging about his neck. With Burley Campbell. Costello floating that one over for Keenan. Keenan, oh my word, that one is coming down so high and that is definitely out the back by Shields. He looks frustrated, but doesn't argue. Just not a huge window to throw that one in. It would have to be pinpoint precise from Keenan and it was not. Oh, maybe that one got tipped. It was a little bit fluttery. Underneath now, Schiller sees the poached Wolzetski. Good option. Sea Island definitely sagging off, trying to gum up the end zone. Force the poles to make as many passes as possible. Maybe hope for the drop. Prevent the instant lethal scoring pass. Can Mikolwe find it? He's faking it, certainly. Instead, underneath, the little dish off. Wolzetski in the end zone. Has catch Marek. It's Universe, 16 apiece. What a game. At 12-8 down, the poles were dead and buried. But now, sudden death, next goal wins. You love to see it. If you're Austria and Belgium who are up next, follow this. Corcoran catches the ball and finds Doherty. You can see they're trying to double that centering option. But the Irish get players back to help out. Now the over the top unleashes Martin. Back in the hands of McGovern. Now Corcoran running a quick one, two, no. Instead towards the far side. Oh, Doherty drops it. Maybe he just got ahead of himself. Inside backhand to Bank. Bisogne. Looking towards the end zone, doesn't like it though. I think they want the sure thing rather than putting that contested shot up there. Now Bisogne on the run, no. Robolevsky wants to be more circumspect with it. Zonia comes underneath and gets it. Finds the little channel through to Robolevsky. Still count rising. Back to Bizon. You can feel the tension here in Prinai. It is very loud out there on a high stall. Has to get the break off, finds it though. Finding a way to get some flow towards the break side. It's not there. Underneath Robolevsky. See Corcoran just take a couple of steps back. Desperate to not let that scoring pass go. Oh, it's a scuba towards the far side. Mateusz Bank with the score, with the Polish victory. 17-16. What a classic of this game was. And in a tough pull, with Latvia as well, how crucial could that loss, could that victory prove to be? Absolute nails. They'd looked a couple of times for that scuba to bank in this game, and they had it there when they needed it over the top. Bank catching his fifth goal of, it, of the game, and an Irish performance that for the first two thirds was magnificent, just crumbled and slipped through their grasp down the stretch. 
and your final score is Poland 17, Ireland 16. What a game that was. It's been an absolute pleasure to cover it here at the European Indoor Ultimate Championships. We're going to show you a highlight reel from the game now as I sign off so I can just rest my voice, I think, get my heart rate down again before Austria-Belgium kicks off in about 10 minutes' time. Final score here in Lithuania is Poland 17, Ireland 16. On behalf of our crew, Benji Reese, saying we'll see you on the other side.